Oh, yes, summer is not officially over, but we're kind of thinking about fall. I mean, they've got the Halloween candy out. You know, there's all kinds of these uh, great fall projects. And uh, Home Wizards here, Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole, we'd love to help you improve your home and improve your life. And I was thinking maybe we'd talk about fall color in your garden, fall trees. Yeah, this is really, especially for me, great, because I grew up in Chicago. And right about now, you'd start to get the beautiful change in color with the bright reds and the yellows. And the leaves fall on the streets, and then my brother and I, of course, would make the big piles, and then we'd ride our sting, Schwinn stingrays oh. and do jumps and fly off over the handlebars into the leaf pile. You just simply can't do that here because there really aren't that many leaves. But that was fall. that one of your chores? Did you have to gather all the leaves? No. And, unfortunately, no? we lived in an apartment, and I didn't have to do anything except make <laughs> piles. <laughs> well, aren't you lucky? <laughs> I know, but now, of course, this is not the case, but... You know, we do have a eucalyptus tree in the front. It really doesn't change color mm. tonally, but leaves do drop. And then you just can't get that height like you, you could back in the Midwest. What do you, where do you find this, this look and this feel? Well, here? you have to have, you have to have the maple, yeah. don't you think? And there's so many different kinds of maple trees. The maple trees were all, well, those were always the leaves that we would press in mm. school. Yes, in the, the wax dictionary. paper. We don't even have dictionaries in our house anymore. It's all on computer, you unfortunately. Don't. No, I mean, I don't have a hard cover. We do. You do? Yeah. Can I borrow it? I'm going to press sure. some leaves after the segment. It makes great bathroom reading. <laughs> 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 now, there are those moments where we're doing a crossword puzzle or something, and you go, oh, really? Yeah. You think you spell it that way, do you? Huh. And you get out the old... I mean, you could Google it, I guess, faster on your iPhone or whatever. But anyway, but yes, we did the leaves in the in the dictionary yeah, and or the wax you, and you paper. Put wax on? Yes, yeah, that fun? leaf art. Yeah, I should bring that back to my kids. I think they'd love that. I think that'd be a good project. Yeah. It's a good fall thing. I yeah. mean, just going out or walking around the neighborhood and collecting leaves, that might be your inspiration for what kind of tree you want to have in your yard. Yeah, Looking there's, a, there's a couple of great streets. I know of one right off of Sunset and Laurel Canyon. Like I think it's called orange. Oh, perfect! And there's a there's a couple of beautiful trees that drop some some great colorful leaves on the ground. So if you're looking to see that, you could find it there. And stop and get a hamburger on the corner while you're there. It's a great fast food place. <laughs> a little eating advice as yeah, well as right. gardening and everything. Home, yeah. uh, but I think I think the maple is a great way to start. I mean, the sugar maple. I mean, it's it kind of has every color you'd want. With fall, with the yellows and the oranges and the reds, and uh, my favorite is the Japanese maple. Uh, Beautiful, but there's, but there's so many different kinds. The key is just to figure out whether it's a sun or or shade. I mean, the the Japanese maple loves really mostly shade. Mm-hmm. Um, but but they're great trees for just kind of getting started, I think, and having that that dramatic fall color. And this, by the way, is a good time to go to your favorite nursery or your home improvement store in the garden section, and they're going to be selling these trees, and they're going to be fully leafed and doing their color display right, right now. And whether you wanted to plant it now or not, you're going to get this, an idea, oh, that's the one I like. I love how that leaf is, is shaped or those mm-hmm. colors. Beautiful. Now, have you been to Colorado? I haven't. Have I you seen the leaves turn there? I bet it's spectacular because oh, you went to school there. I sure did. And I tell you, the uh, the uh, the just shimmering look Ooh, of that, that yes. yellow uh-huh. against that really bright, almost navy blue sky really is something to behold. With the wind? Yeah, uh-huh. gorgeous. It almost looks like jewelry, doesn't it? It sure does. Well, so the maple tree, I think, would be a good start. Um there's just, I mean, there's dozens and dozens of different kinds, depending truly on the kind of leaves, the different shape that you want or how tall you want. Some of them are, are shorter. They'll grow maybe just about eight feet tall. But some of the others uh, will grow like maybe 15 feet tall. Mm. And just so you have to really kind of size up how much area you have um, and, and what you want. If you have mainly sun, mainly shade. Uh, the full moon maple is this really cool one. It grows about 10 feet tall. And the leaves uh, are mainly yellow, but they also have a little bit of orange and red as the fall progresses. And so that's kind of fun because as the as the tree matures and as it evolves, it's kind of like you can mark it on your calendar. Oh, guess what? Now it's, guess it is October. Now it's November, you know? Hmm. You know what I notice here too? When you have one of these trees that does drop leaves around this time or October, November, especially in California, you really notice it on the lawns. It's, it becomes almost like a, an artwork. artistic yeah, yeah. Art, artwork piece in the front. It's great looking. 
Um, so check out the maples, the sugar maple, the red maple. I mean, you can just Google them and check it out and, and find out what your zone is, how many hours of sun you have, what kind of size area you have, and, and I think that's a good a good way to start. The sweet birch um, is another really spectacular tree if you love yellow. I mean, you talked about the shimmering effect in Colorado. Mm-hmm. If you can just picture, I mean, Those the trunk. Those are the, the, the aspens, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I love the, them. The, tr- the trunk of this tree is, is almost, you know, deep dark chocolate and then in the contrast with these feathery yellow neon yellow leaves i mean it's just so gorgeous and and then the actual trunk that has a little bit of cinnamon color in it and the bark kind of peels back it just creates this really neat golden yellow fall explosion and this is a, a good one to consider from from sun to shade and it likes a moist and, and well drained soil and it this is a biggie guy though this can this is going to yeah, grow about tall? 50 feet tall oh really so this is going to need a big place in your front yard or your backyard for that but it's it's a beautiful elegant a tree that will really make a statement, I think, for your home. Hmm. Love that. And then, and what would you what would you do, for example, if you were someone like me who doesn't have much of this on their property? What would be your first choice? What's your favorite? Definitely would do the Japanese maple. Um, and there's a bunch of other really cool ones. I love the ginkgo biloba. Mm. You know, you you probably see that a lot in the health food stores. Sure. But the ginkgo tree, it has. These these yellow leaves that are shaped almost like coins, you know, and and they're so pretty because they they really have this breathtaking shade of a of a golden yellow and and as the leaves drop, you talked about how pretty it can be in Southern California with the leaves kind of creating a blanket on the grass. Um, they really create just a beautiful uh, glow against the green you know, here in Southern California. And do we know what what the ginkgo does when you buy it in the pharmacy? What does it actually do? Do we know? Is it an anti? I think it's antioxidant, isn't it? And maybe an antidepressant. Hey, I think I'm going to get one of these. <laughs> you start nibbling on the leaves? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but the ginkgo uh, loves sun to shade, and this guy also is pretty tall. This one's going to grow up to 100 feet tall, but um, it's, it is a definite, definite keeper to consider, I think, here um, hmm. in Southern California. Another one, if you love colors that are more like the burgundy, now don't freak out when I tell you what it's called. It's called the sumac. But this is not the poison ivy, the poison oak sumac. I've spent some years at summer camp. Yeah, this I is not that sumac. one. This is yeah. the non-poisonous version, but it has this beautiful, rich burgundy um, and red color that you'll see in autumn. And uh, it's it's just extra tough, and it's beautiful. And um, it's, it's not a good choice if you have a small space landscape because it's going to grow about 15 feet tall, but it loves full sun, well-drained soil, and I think it's a keeper. Another one to, to, okay. uh, to the think sumac. about. The sumac. Okay. So again, this is not going to be the poison ivy. No. It, the leaves are a little bit different, but I know when I when you see sumac, you think you've had a lot itch of poison. cream. The itch you cr- think itch cream? Yeah, this summer, as a matter of fact, a couple of my kids got some poison oak. Did and, they? Yeah, and it was. I also had an experience hiking up in Will Rogers State Park a couple of years ago, and I, I'm, I said, "I'm going to do this bushwhack thing. I'm just going to go straight down the mountain through no trail, and I'm going to blaze my own trail." And then cut to two days later, me <laughs> soaking in the bathroom, going, oh, you know, just swollen ooh, from all the poison ouch. oak that I all had. over everywhere. Ooh. And I was wearing shorts and you know a t-shirt, so oh, no. it was really like when I say everywhere, everywhere. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Good to know. Uh, a just, lot of salve, by the way, yeah. for a 225-pound man. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a lot of salve. Go ahead. I, uh, calamine lotion, right? I, I basically looked like that. that. Pink, Remember that movie pink? Powder with that yeah. pale guy? I looked like him for about two weeks. Oh. Yeah. It's not comfortable. I mean, we've had it in our yard where, uh, you know, don't even realize it, and you're working in the garden, all of a sudden, oh, whoa, there it is. Or like our dogs will go out, and they're rubbing their bodies up against... The poison oak, right. the poison ivy, and yeah. then they rub against you, and then all of a sudden now you've got, you know, swelling. It's on amazing, your arm. isn't it, that a plant can do that? Not very friendly. No. Uh, another great fall tree to consider for color is the service berry. Now, what I like about this is that the leaves are uh, a very deep red, and they also provide a great summer fruit. And uh, and then as it changes throughout the fall, it kind of goes from a red, and then it creates this uh, orange foliage as well. So, and by summer service fruit, berry. you mean. Something that looks beautiful, or actually something that one can consume. That you can consume. I've, I've, ne- I've I never, I have not heard I've of the service berry juice. Well, we're all about our, our troops. 
<laughs> it's called a service berry. Service berry. Very nice. Thank you. We love American <laughs> troops. Uh, but this guy is, is full sun and part shade and, and loves to have a little red, white, and blue right nearby. Mm-hmm. And it grows about 20 <laughs> feet tall. The service berry tree. Okay. I like it. Um, so we have a lot of options. Yeah, we do. Um, what the about do- this? Yeah, I was going to say. That's the dogwood. The dogwood. Okay. The dogwood is, oh my gosh, it's stunning. Every every time of the year. First of all, it it has these really beautiful white and print and pink um, springtime leaves and flowers. Mm-hmm. And then in the fall, it turns purple and red, and it just I mean it's just never ending showy hmm. display. So the dogwood, I would highly recommend that. It likes to have sun to shade, and it grows about twenty five feet tall. Hmm. So it's amazing, gonna- by the way, that all of these varieties can grow here. This is why I moved here, by the way. And then, I mean, who said that we didn't have fall color? I mean, you can go. Have you gone on these fall color tours? No, I haven't, you know? but I'd like to. Kind of a fun I'm thing. available next week. You can you... do a little bus tour, do a fall <laughs> color thing. Yeah. When we come back, we'll talk about more uh, fall color things you can do for your garden. And we've got a great project or two to give the containers that kind of fall mossy look. And we were joking that, well, the rats will eat them. Yeah. No, the rats aren't going to eat them. That was another segment. But you're listening to Home Wizards, Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole here. We love to help you improve your home, improve your life here at KFWB News Talk 980. Yeah, I think a red colored tree would look good in our front yeah, like yard. Yeah, a Corvette, maybe. <laughs> this is Home Wizards, where we love to help you improve your home, improve your life. And I guess a red Corvette would come in handy for anybody. Eric Stromer's with me here, Cindy Dole. And uh, thanks for sharing part of your Saturday with us. And by the way, if you are driving in your little red Corvette or whatever, and you're hearing You're some, lucky. <laughs> yes, you're lucky. Hopefully you're just having a great time, you know, tooling around town. But you're hearing stuff you want to hear again, no worries. Just go to the website, uh, yourhomewizards.com. And uh, it looks like you might have gotten I mail. Got, I actually you got, got some, some mail. mail just now. Um, but you'll be able to find on the website that the past shows and uh, contact us. Let us know uh, the topics that you'd like to hear, like as we've been hearing from a lot of you. What about fall color? Right. That's what brings us to Red Corvette. So fall color, you grew up with it. I, I grew up with it. And I'm, I got to tell you, I'm very excited. I want to know what you're talking about, about this pot that you're- Well, well we're going to get to the pot thing. Oh. Uh, the pot is going to just hang on one second. A few more of these trees. All right. Viburnum. Viburnum. It's a great fall color tree. And what I love is it produces these white flowers in the springtime. I like to get, you know, the two for deal. Well, because you get, yeah, you get that. Fruit, yeah. In spring, you get something. A little spring in fall, something, and then something. fall, a little double something, something. Yeah. You know, and then in the fall, it brings that, that the the really warm shades of red, and along with maybe a little bit of an orangey color. So check out Viburnum, and they love the sun to the part shade when you go to your nursery. And it's about a 15 foot tall tree. You, you know, I think you folks in Pasadena. In that area where it's an you older, folks. Yeah, well, the the folks that live there. I mean, yeah. you're, you're not far from yeah, there, you know, Glendale yeah. area. But I think because it's older construction, more architecturally mm. significant. I think the tradition of planting beautiful the trees Royal Seiko. started there much more than we see it in other communities. Maybe I think, you know, I think that a lot of communities are really into adding more trees. I agree you with know, you, there, but if you take a tour through. Yeah. Some of those areas out there, it feels very much like the Midwest where I grew up. Mm-hmm. It, it has that same look, and that's because of that great landscaping, I think. You know, in our in our neighborhood, uh, our uh, neighborhood community program believed that it would be a good idea to give away trees for the entire several block area to not only make it more beautiful, but to slow down traffic. And you know what? I think it kind of psychologically does do that. Where there's when, a canopy When there's a canopy, street, all of yeah. a sudden you kind of just go, oh. I mean, you just kind of look and you go, oh, yeah, there's, you don't a, there's feel. reverence for it. You know, it yeah. really feels beautiful when you're in it. You aren't it? all of a sudden thinking, oh, I got to ram it. I'm on the freeway. No. You know, maybe we should need to have trees at the freeway. <laughs> we would all point. slow down with canopy. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, there's so many great trees that you can uh, t- bring to your yard to have a little fall color. And, and who said that Southern California doesn't have it? Um, so, anyway, check out the Viburnum. That is a good one. And also, we love the maple tree. Another good one among our, our 10 to 15 great ones is something called sweet gum. Sweet gum. You don't have to say it like you're from the South. <laughs> <laughs> maybe feel I was watching Forrest Gump the other night, oh, and so I think it. I'm saying sweet gump. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's all kinds of ways to have shrimp. <laughs> That's right, shrimps. <laughs> but sweet gum, um, it's really neat because it almost gives you the, it has the leaf shape of the maple tree. It right? really does. Pick- Actually, when I saw that picture, I thought it was a mm-hmm. maple. And I love I love the how you get red, orange, and burgundy. I mean, 
Right. We want it all. That's a beautiful tone of burgundy. It's a nice tone, and it it likes sun to shade. Um, So check out the the sweet gum. Stop it. (laughs) (laughs) And it has a habit, I guess, of of kind of rounding with age, and uh, it has little spiny seed balls that Mm. appear, um, and it's very fragrant, too. Hmm. So do you have do you, you know have I was at the Ford Theater over the week oh, or yes. actually just no two yes. nights ago I, I saw a great performance there I've never been there and they had these magnolia trees there that were so fragrant it was just will, amazing and what a difference it makes when not only you have the canopy like we're talking uh-huh. about but the fragrance at night oh and beautiful. the white the white flowers have you been to the Ford Theater I haven't oh my goodness this is a built in the t- early twenties some woman apparently wanted to put on a play and didn't have the financing so she just bought and paid for this whole facility and created it for this play. I hope the play was good. <laughs> so anyway, enough Neat. about that for Well, you know, that's that's another learning lesson is that when you go out to dinner or to the theater or wherever you go, I love going to the Greek theater. Me too. Or yeah. the Hollywood Bowl. Look at the trees that they have and look at the plantings because it makes you feel a certain way and maybe even take a picture of it and that's going to then help you with your shopping list when you go to the nursery. Very and, good and idea. These. And then you can take that to the nursery yeah. and say, I saw so here, this. Give me this. Give me that one. Now. Yeah. <laughs> and usually they're pretty good about helping you identify them just from the photo. Uh, this is a beautiful tree that reminds me a lot of the Greek, by the way. It's called the bald cypress. And it's, it has this kind of an evergreen, kind of a pine tree, conifer look. But in the fall, the needles turn to this kind of a red color before they before they drop to the ground. And it's just kind of a neat little hmm. added bonus that you can enjoy uh, from spring to fall uh, to winter. It's a, it's a big tree. It's 120 feet tall uh, when it's fully grown. And it likes sun and moist soil. But uh, check it out. The father gilla, not the gorilla, but the fa- the father gilla, um, has also kind of a beautiful leaf. It, um, it That's reminds, a beautiful It reminds me of the plant. ginkgo in a way, huh? Yeah, sure does. And, Again, it uh, looks like little coin shapes. Little leaves. coins in gold and orange, and it has a, a scent of honey in, uh, in the springtime. Hmm. Real honey. I love the me some honey. Fa- the Father Gill. <laughs> Every, everything else seems it's to come back to reference. food when we're talking about stuff. <laughs> movie references or food. Um, anyway, so check out the Father Gilla. <laughs> And it's a, it's good in the shade, uh, it, so if you have a nice shady area and it likes really moist, drained soil. So if you had that, along with the red uh, Japanese maple, you'd be in business. You sure would. Uh, the Virginia Sweet Spire. Now, these leaves are really interesting because um, it's, a, it's a shrub uh, for many months that in the summertime gives you fragrant white flowers. And then in the, in the fall, you get these purple and red leaves. And it's easy to grow. And I'm all about ease and, you know, not sweating it in the garden, right? And it's full sun to part shade. Boom, you're done. Ten feet tall. Who, my, by the way, who do you think names all this stuff? Is it is it the botanist guys? I think so. They, they just create these I think names? So, yes, I think I so. I love this. So this is a Virginia sweet spire. Maybe that's where he grew up. You know, there always is some kind of a story. They want to, hmm. you know, pay tribute to somebody. Uh, the oak leaf hydrangea is a cool one. I mean, you talked about doing a great leaf collection project with the kids. The veining on these leaves, I mean, it looks like it spreads out bigger than your hand would spread. And it's it's great. It's a great favorite shrub for the shade. And uh, it has, little, again, clusters of white flowers in the summertime. And then a burgundy fall foliage uh, in, in the fall. And it's, again, a shade lover. Remind me again. Mm. How do you do the wax leaves? Is it is it... Two pieces of wax paper, yeah. and then you and iron it. Was you can that do that, was? sure, or just put it in the book. Or cloth over. It was cloth over the wax paper with an iron, I think, to to, to save the heat to from getting the heat into from, the yeah right. right. So I I would just put the two wax on the the two sheets of wax on either side of the leaf and just put it in a book or or a couple stacks of books. Okay. Boom, you're done. But if you want to do it really fast, you know, yeah, you put the yeah, yeah, put the, the, the the towel like a like a dish cloth on either side, and, and then iron you iron it. it. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not going to iron through the wax paper. Right. Gotcha. A uh, witch hazel is a great one. It's a, if you like yellow, if you're a, fa- a, a fan of the yellow leaves, it's a good one for autumn. It has uh, the kind of a goldeny yellow fall burst. And uh, the, the leaves kind of have like a spider texture. Hmm. It loves the shade. It's about 12 feet tall. So check that out. And this one is out. where the product witch hazel comes from? <laughs> I don't, you know what? It might. Hmm. It might. I don't know. Okay. Do you use that for your skin? Well, what do you, why do you think I look so well, dewy? Well, I, I knew that you had the oatmeal mask <laughs> last week, but I didn't know that they maybe they cleaned it up with witch hazel. By the way, I had a facial a couple of days ago. My, yes. my wife dragged me to this. To uh, a spa day. To a spa day. And I think the woman did it a little too hard. And my son said, you look like someone slapped you. 
Oh, it was just a see. little too much of the of the business on the back end of the facial. A little too much exfoliation. Exfo- that is that what they call yeah. it? Yeah, because you I, just have tender skin. I felt like I fell <laughs> off a bicycle and slid on the cement. Oh, but how's it look now? It looks great. Thank you. Youthful and dewy. I, I never thought you'd ask. <laughs> um, the burning bush. You gotta love the burning oh, bush. This doesn't? is a good one. It's a tough shrub. Uh, it has great shades of red and pink. Uh, it's just a beautiful plant. <coughs> Excuse me, a little tickle in my throat here. That's a beautiful color. That's almost like a fine burgundy wine, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And that one is easy to grow. It's it's more shrub than tree. It's about uh, maybe 5 to 15 feet tall. Mm-hmm. Now, here is the one that I absolutely, you asked me, my all-time favorite. Okay. It's called the Red Dogwood Twig. Now, this is something where, when you look at it, the bark is actually red. So when it loses its leaves, it still looks cool. Oh, that's amazing. It almost looks like a crab crab leg, doesn't it? We'll get to the project a little bit later in the show about uh, bringing moss to your containers, but we're going to take a little quick break as we segue into Hour 2. Up next, we're going to talk about uh, allergy-proofing your home. Do you ever get that sinus pressure? This is supposed to be a really bad allergy season. We've got an expert. Yeah, I feel my eyes were watering this morning when I woke up. You can't have that. Home Wizards, Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole here to help you improve your home improve your life let's kick it up a notch I've seen a lot of joy and I've seen a lot of- 